Well, Coach, last week when we described the Boston win, the word that kept coming up was fight. And this, similar to that game, came down to the final moments. What was your biggest takeaway if you did have to come away with maybe a word to describe it? Uh, that we were pretty good in chaos, you know, to be <laughs> honest with you. Uh, you know, made some mistakes in subtle situations, but as the game got, uh, you know, got tight and, and we needed plays to be made, uh, our guys made them. And I want to run through some of those specific plays because there were some identifiable ones that I think really resonated with fans as they watched. And early on, you're, you're three men down, and then it, there's a goal. You're mm -hmm. still two men down. You're able to kill that penalty with a C.J. Costabile faceoff win and then Matt Abbott doing what he does best. How did that play maybe give you a sense that, wow, these guys are, are ready to fight and play in that chaos today? Yeah, that was huge to only give up one goal in that situation. Um, you know, and CJ won a big face-off. And he's been winning the timely face-offs that matter. You know, his stats might not be great at the face-off X, but when we need a big face-off, he usually comes through. Uh, so, you know, all the guys kind of, you know, I thought after that penalty really kind of refocused, uh, got them a little bit fired up, and uh, they, you know, made a little run there. And Matt Abbott's a name that lacrosse fans know, but maybe for the casual fan, they don't really understand his value. How important is he in situations like that yeah. where you can just say, hey, run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wind him up and let him go. Uh, the, but Matt is, you know, he's one of those guys that like uh, doesn't really make many mistakes. So uh, he's always smart with the ball on offense and in clearing situations. Uh, plays very good defense, gets ground balls. Um, he, he, he's so valuable and he, he does the little things that maybe don't go noticed by a casual fan, but you know, for us as a team, we really know how important he is to us. And he's a vet, but some of the young guys are really starting to make their their name in this league and, and with this team. And at halftime, as you went into half, Jay Carlson and Nate Lunas, mm -hmm. two of those young players with goals to kind of give you that two goal cushion going into the break. What kind of momentum did that build as you headed into halftime? Yeah, not just the goals they scored, but how they scored them. You know, I thought. Uh, they, they rode really hard, you know, getting some easy goals off riding situations. Uh, both Nate and Jay got some ground balls that, you know, got us some easy goals when we're a little bit struggling on the offense six on six. Uh, and then, you know, obviously their finishing ability is huge for us. Nate being on the left hand side and Jay as a right handed kind of finisher uh, have been really important for us. And I want to get into Nate because he's a local kid. Um, his size doesn't wow you, yeah. but he just seems to have a knack of being at the right place. He clearly has the ability to play at this level. but. What did you need to see from him in training camp or maybe when it was last year when he was on your practice squad that gave you the confidence that he could be somebody you could count on in these big moments? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that stood out during training camp was his, uh, his shooting ability. You know, he has uh, you know, a lot of great release points. He, he reminds me a lot of Brendan Mundorf when he was younger, just the way he shoots the ball, uh, the way he can finish. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's, you know, as good as it, as it comes in the MLL level. Um, so it, for, matter, for him, it's just a matter of getting comfortable, finding spots that he can be successful in, and, and him just kind of, uh, you know, kind of building that confidence game by game. Another UMBC product like Mundorf. Let's spin things to the third quarter, and an interesting play with a Kevin Cooper two-pointer. It ends up working in your favor. What's going through your mind on the sideline when there's some uncertainty whether it was tipped? Now the rule as you best described it to me, had it been tipped by one of your players, then it should have been a one point goal. Mm -hmm. If it's tipped by a Charlotte player, it should remain a two. How did you take it in from the sideline? Uh, you know, just Kevin Cooper bringing the heat from the outside <laughs> there. Uh, a, a pass that got, uh, that got deflected and winning the goal. Um, just, you know, timely play. But, uh, you know, uh, kind of lucky, lucky bounce for us, but, you know, we'll take him. At this point of the season and at this level, you need uh, some luck at times. And the faceoff X, as we mm -hmm. uh, discussed last week with Charlie Rafa going down, is a bit of an adventure for you guys. And yep. Mike Poppleton did some work early and seemed to stem the tide and allowed CJ late in the game to be so effective. Yep. How did you see that playing out? Is that kind of what you planned for, or was it just sort of riding the change of the game? Uh, just kind of riding and see how the guys are doing versus matchups. You know, Charlotte dressed two face-off guys, so depending on who put who they put out there uh, to take their face-offs, we try to counter them with different players. So um, I thought CJ at the end of the game uh, really negated Brendan Fowler. You know, they played together at Duke. They're familiar with each other. Um, you know, Brendan scored a couple goals on us, and CJ was able to kind of chase him down and, and, and make that ball a 50-50 ball. We touched on CJ last week, how he's that Swiss Army knife, but is he playing maybe at, at a level that we haven't seen in recent years? He's always been a consistent <laughs> and at times dynamic MLL player, but yep. it just seems early this year he's in great shape and he's able to do a lot of things. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that stood out to us at the beginning of the season was what kind of condition he was in. Mm -hmm. He was in great shape. He's worked hard in the off season. And I think uh, you know, what really stands out to me with his play this year is he's coming through in the clutch, in the clutch situations. He scored the tying goal for us 
uh, a huge play down in the fourth quarter. Uh, he got a great faceoff win, a good ground ball for us uh, to kind of help us, you know, get over that hump and, and, and get Jay the game-winning goal. But uh, I think for the most part, he's just been playing, you know, really confident and, and stepping up in big-time situations. And this will be a question for, for Dave Cottle, general manager, but you're involved in personnel decisions as well. Does his play give you a sense that, okay, maybe we don't have to leverage anything too much to try and find a full-time face-off man, attack that in the draft higher than maybe we would want to because he's in great shape, mm -hmm. and if we put him in in critical moments, he can make a play. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it gives us the ability to kind of give different looks. So I don't know if he'll be a primary faceoff guy, mm -hmm. but I think he could be. You know, if we, if we dress an extra defender and made him just a primary faceoff guy, it, it definitely gives a, a different matchup than most faceoff guys are used to uh, going against a, just another faceoff, uh, a faceoff get-off guy. Um, so CJ will really scrap and fight for every ground ball and makes those guys work. So I think that would, you know, between his conditioning and his uh, his knack for you know making those faceoffs a, a kind of a three-on-three -three scrum. Uh, it really helps us out and, uh, you know, it's been a big asset to us. Now let's go to that final play uh, of the game and, and one that I think probably stole the weekend in mm -hmm. terms of if you're a lacrosse fan, that's the game at its best. You guys turn the ball over as you attempt to get that game winner. Mm -hmm. Charlotte gains control. Shot clock's off, so they can hold for that last shot. Uh, take me through what it was going through your mind as Chan and Chuck attempts to um, attack Jesse Bernhardt. There's a little two-man game at the arc there, and then one of the better plays I've seen that led to the game winner. You know, going back to the possession before, I thought Jay, I think, he, you know, he maybe tried to force it a little mm -hmm. bit too much, going a little too much one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but defensively, you know, Jesse made an outstanding play. He's one of the best defenders in the game. And I thought what the most important, uh, impressive thing about that play was his ground ball um, and his play on the sideline, just uh, refusing to get pushed out of bounds. And then falling down, made a great pass to Mark Lucini, who then hit Jay for, for the game winner. Um, so just a, a, you know, a remarkable individual play, but a great teamwork play as well with uh, moving the ball in a five on four situation and, and getting Jay a shot that may have been out of his range a little bit, but uh, he was able to stick it near side pipe. Yeah, it was almost an off-speed shot that yeah. seemed to catch Cipriano off guard. What, what does that play say about Jay? Look, if you're playing at this level, mm -hmm. you've got a short memory, but he's, again, yep. a young player trying to make a name for himself, guarantee a spot on this roster. He basically, as you said, maybe pushed it, turns it over, but then quickly redeems himself. Yeah, yeah, just just a matter of, you know, he's a great player. He scored a lot of goals in, in college and a lot of goals in this league, and, uh, you know, it's it just a matter of putting him in situations where he can be successful, you know, where he's best as, a, as an off-ball guy and a, and a cutter and a finisher. Uh, so, you know, we're asking him to carry the ball a bit more right now, and he's not comfortable with that, but when he gets his chances to put the ball away, he does that, and he's, he's one of the best I've seen at that. Lucini gave it up. Here is a shot oh. attempt, and Chesapeake scores! It's number 32, Jay Carlson, with 16.6 .6 seconds to go in regulation. So many players contributed to this win, and that's a testament to this group thus far. It's a, it really is a team effort, and I think that was identifiable. And the fact that Miles Jones, they did a nice job mm -hmm. on him defensively. Look, he has an impact whether he scores or not, but Garrett Thule continues to be mm -hmm. that name that in the scorebook is putting up three, four goals. And, and look, we all know what kind of player he was coming out of Army and mm -hmm. what he's done early in his career in the league. But I, I'll say I was unexpected. I didn't expect this based off of his time away from the game. How's he been able to do it? You know, it's one, he's got great talent. You know, you don't really lose that talent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, talking to him a little bit this weekend, you know, during one of his MLL seasons, he, he just got off Ranger School where he lost 50 pounds, you know, in about a, a couple week period and then went right back into playing, which, you know, obviously physically is very, very difficult to do. So I think now he's in a better, you know, regimen where he can be, you know, in shape and, and, and play the cross a little bit more. Um, and then it's a matter of putting him in situations where he can be successful. He's a, he's a great goal scorer. He's got a knack for that. He scored some big goals for us, uh, you know, all throughout the season. Um, and I think he's playing more of his natural position at attack. And you mentioned the Ranger School, and, and it's a well-documented story. But where, if at all, have you seen that experience, whether yeah. it be the leadership side or just the not panicking in yeah. moments because at the end of the day is a lacrosse game with Garrett. Yeah. yeah, I think the biggest thing is just not being, you know, if he makes a mistake, it doesn't affect him for the rest of the game. He's able to bounce back um, from the mistakes that he makes and, and, and make the next play. And I think it just, you know, I think it's a confidence thing. I also think it's a character thing and a leadership thing where he can he can put those mistakes behind him and, uh, and continue to push on. And uh, another storyline to this game in the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about last week, Brian Phipps goes down at half. He takes a shot to the calf and, and just wasn't playing well. So you got a boost from Nico. He gets a start. Uh, was that part due to 
Brian Phipps' health, and, and how do you feel like Nico came out of this game? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Brian was, uh, you know, he his calf is still a little sore. He was wrapped up pretty heavily, uh, limping a little bit. I thought, you know, if we needed him, we could have gone to him in a pinch, but I wanted to give him an extra week rest to, uh, you know, get that thing 100%. And, uh, you know, Nico, Nico played pretty well. Um, I think he's a little bit disappointed with some of the saves that he maybe didn't make, but he's a competitive guy, and he made some saves, especially early on in the fourth quarter, that, uh, that really helped us out. That was a physical game in Charlotte. Each week we see guys banged up or, or knocked around, but there were some plays. You think of Miles Jones getting hit in the back a couple times. Mm -hmm. Did you guys come out of that game okay? And how did that physicality um, maybe stand out to you as, as you watched the film back or you just took yeah. it in uh, in person Saturday night? Yeah, I think the guys were a little sore. I think it doesn't hurt as bad when you win, so that's always <laughs> nice. Um, you know, but guys are getting you know getting treatment and getting ready for you know to come back in a short week. Uh, just you know playing on Friday night now. Um, you know, Michael Evans, uh, you know, did hurt his back, so he was out. Um, so, you know, we were a little short at the end of the game, uh, and our guys continue to, to play hard and fight through it. And that's kind of been our thing all season. We, you know, we've been down some games, we've been shorthanded, and, and we continue to do, uh, just kind of compete and fight and you know, hold on for the last second. Bernhardt, he got rid of it as he was falling to the turf. Glassini gave it up. Here is a shot oh. attempt, and Chesapeake scores! It's number 32, Jay Carlson, with 16.6 .6 seconds to go in regulation.